Hello and Namaskar viewers, I am Sanjeev Pandya welcoming you to this week's edition of the Business Talk with AJ right here on ITV Gold. The show brings you all the latest business stories that you need to know from around the world and the show is brought to you by Sai CPS Services, a professional accounting firm and a tax advisory also for you to understand where to invest money before the end of the year so that way you can save your taxes. Besides that, for your personal and the corporate taxes or for any business related matter, Science CPA Services can help you out. Their phone number is 908-380-6876. With that note, I'd like to welcome Mr. AJ Kumar of Science CPA Services to the show. Sir, welcome. Good Thank to you, have Sir you. Rajit. Thank you for the kind introduction. You're very welcome. And now the news uh, that I like to start with is, uh, I think finally the sun is shining on U.S. economy because everything is looking good. Inflation right now is at 3.14 percent. Unemployment is at 3.7 percent. And Dow Jones just a couple of days ago reached the historical mark that's at 37,000 points. On top of that. Fed Chairman Jeremy Powell, when they met a couple of days ago, decided not to raise the rates. And also, he said that next year there could be three rate cuts. He penciled that there could be three rate cuts. So, stock market rebounded with, uh, with that positive news. And everything is just looking really good during these holidays. Absolutely, Sanjeev Ji. And that's a, that's a wonderful start to the show. Everything is looking positive, especially at this time of the year, the holiday time of the mm. year, when we see positive news, good news. And this is the third time, if you remember, uh, Mr. Powell did not increase the rate third consecutive time. If you remember, before these three times, we had seen the rate increase 11 times, 11 consecutive times from March 2022 till recently, every time Fed met, we had a rate increase. The rate has been the highest right now since this country has seen in last 22 years. And when you have the high interest rate, it affects everything. It affects the gas price, it affects the mortgage rate, it affects the auto loans. So you see the impact on your day-to-day -day life every day. Now seeing the positive news, third time when Mr. Powell did not increase the rate and gave this impression that the rate declining times are here. So next year we are hoping to see substantial rate decrease, but please understand the rates increased to this point by having 11 increases. So even if we see three, four decreases next year, it wouldn't be back to normal. It wouldn't be back to where we used to have. We are expecting in 2025 the rates to come back to where the rates used to be. All right, but it's a good sign. You know, Absolutely. It's a good sign. And saying that there could be at least three cuts next year, and it's a penciled in. Remember, next year is the election year. So they will do whatever they can in order to have this you know, inflation rate down and then a boost of the economy. But overall, consumer prices are still high. People are still complaining about high, higher grocery prices and then everywhere else. Uh, and I want to add one thing, the retail sales for the month of November rose 0.3% compared to October 0.2%. So December sales, I think they are expecting it's going to be high also. Uh, absolutely. And the best part is all the economists were expecting November sales to be lower. But November sales turned out to be higher. So it gives a positive impression and that creates a good impact on the stock market. That's why, they see, remember the stock market works on the expectation, not on the real result. When you see these positive news, including federal government did not increase the rate, the consumer spending turned out to be higher, interest did not increase, all these things create an impression in the stock market that a lot of people feel safer, stable, and that's when the stock market starts increasing. We have seen 37,000 uh, Dow Jones for yes. the first time in the life of this country. 37,000 and uh, as we go into the taping of the show, it's inching towards 38,000. Absolutely. So let's see what happens next week. And with, with Dow Jones, S&P 500. Yes. Across 4,700 points. It's That's everywhere. Also I mean, once one stock exchange increases, yes. typically every stock exchange is increasing proportionately or similarly. All right, so that's the um, uh, the update for you. Now let's talk about one of the uh, major stocks, 
which does very, very well in the, in the index, that's Amazon. And I'm not talking about Amazon's stock price, I'm talking about Amazon's big victory in the euro. Um, as AJ had mentioned earlier to me before the show taping that it's very hard for US companies to win a battle in the European Union. And here Amazon has managed to win the court battle for some 250 million euros. Yep. $270 million is what we are talking about for a U.S. company to win a court case for $270 million against a European Union court is what makes this news significant. It's not that it's a lot of money. Even for Amazon, $270 million is a lot of money. But winning the case against European Union court, that European Union, European tax laws were trying to impose these taxes on Amazon is illegal, is not good, and they went to the court and Amazon finally won the case against the European Union and now they don't have to pay $270 million. That sounds good. Let's go to the next story. Airbnb, Airbnb sorry to that. Airbnb is not so lucky because Airbnb also were involved in a legal dispute in Italy and now it seems that Airbnb will have to pay their back taxes. Absolutely. So Airbnb is trying to settle for $621 million against the same European Union court and it, it was mainly against Italy. Italian government brought in the case and now Airbnb unfortunately have to settle and pay $621 million. <clears throat> now moving on to the uh, next story. Now this is amazing that news outlets, media outlets rather we should say, they're going to be cutting down jobs left and right. Roughly well, about 2,700 jobs are in, in, in scheduled to cut. That's true. 2,700 jobs from the media outlet, from the news outlets is being cut. But if you go further in the story, you see a lot of digital hmm. media are hiring. Yes. It's just your typical newspapers, typical magazines, People are not reading it anymore. The way we do business, the way the news is distributed is changing. That's why we have 2,700 people on one hand being fired, being let go from the news media, from a traditional news media, and we see thousands of new people being hired in the digital media side where the, the news is distributed electronically. Okay. That's a news media. And now, AJ, I find this story very, very interesting. This might be the story of the week. It has to do with Ernst & Young. Tax season is just around the corner from January 1st. The tax season is going to be starting, right? And Ernst & Young, they have announced that they are going to be laying off their 30 partners and about 100 employees during this holiday month. You are right. And it's a big news. Yes. We don't really see typically the top four companies laying off people. <laughs> top four companies are laying off over 3,000 employees at this time of the year. Laying of 30 partners by ENY is a big news by itself. But please remember, when it comes to the accounting services, tax is one part of it. It's one of those things when you look at the doctors, there are dentists, there are heart specialists, there are brain specialists. Similarly, when it comes to the accountants, there are tax specialists. These layoffs that we are talking about, Sanjeevji, mm. is mostly in the advisory service part of it. Not in the tax service, but having that said, Laying of people in the accounting service, in the advisory service is not common. Especially laying of partners is really, really uncommon. Well, laying of partners, they may have something in the agreement that you I'm know, sure. the firm, absolutely. firm holds the uh, final call on laying uh, off the people. Absolutely. And they only notify partners last week that they're going to be laying off. And that, that makes it difficult, especially for the people who are being laid off or who are losing their jobs during this time of the year. Yes. It becomes difficult for them, not just financially, but psychologically as well. Okay. Now the partners, their partners, but do they hold positions like um, like a head of the department or a manager or something like that? Well, of they course. Do. Of course. They have thousands of partners. Okay. Not everybody can be the head of department. Okay. There are some partners who are head of certain delegations, sure. head of certain clients. Yes. So there are a lot of heads and a lot of partners I are see. not head of any department. Just wanted to understand that. Yes. Right. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Okay, the big four firm that um, that AJ just mentioned, the other four firm, they are Deloitte, then Ernst & Young, obviously, KPMG and Price Water Cooper House. Absolutely. They BWC. started to hire a lot of people after a pandemic, but now they realize that they are overstaffed and they are going to be laying off the people. Even though Ernst & Young says that, you know, laying off this many people will not affect most of the people or most of their clients but they are reducing 
you know, uh, their, their, their force, workforce. But you think after the tax season next year, because I remember last week you mentioned many companies lay off people in the month of December to have better financials. You think they will be hiring back sometime April of next year? It's possible, but in, in this case it's slightly different. The way it works with the accounting firms, the business for the accounting firm depends on the economy condition, de depends on the business of other businesses. So right now, there's a cash crunch in the market. Nobody has cash. After PPP, after EIDL, all the loans, all the grants have dried out. The grants that people received during the COVID time is not there anymore. So there is a real cash crunch in the market. And that creates a situation when people are not hiring the top four accounting firm. If you have a big business, you try to go to the second layer. If you are going to the second layer, you try to go to the third layer. Mm. So instead of going to the super uh, CPA, you go to the second best CPA. Instead of going to the second best CPA, you try to go to the third best CPA just because <laughs> everybody is cost conscious in the market. Sure. And that creates a situation when a lot of top accounting firms are letting go people. All right. With that note, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, you know, this layoff of people and unemployment rate and what's in the news, there are a couple of stories there, interesting stories. That's coming up right after this message. Please stay with us. Welcome back to the second half of the Business Talk with AJ, brought to you by Science CPS Services. This is the time for you to contact Science CPS Services to understand your taxes, what are your liabilities, and where can you invest money in one of the uh, retirement plans in order to save your tax liability. Remember, Science CPS Services believes in doing your taxes right. Their experienced, knowledgeable, on-hand CPAs can help you and guide you with any tax matter. So whether it's a taxes, whether it's a payroll, whether you need a virtual CEO or CFO, and for any tax advisory matter, Science CPS Services can help you out. Just give them a call at 908-380-6876. All right, with that note, let's bring in the other half of the stories. Before the break, we were talking about how Ernst & Young, uh, Ernst and Young um, has laid off people, you know, uh, 30 partners and 100 employees. Now these layoffs continue and the story comes in that, you know, uh, contrast to layoff, U.S. payroll rose 199,000 in November. Uh, absolutely. The expectation was to have the increase at 190,000, but seeing that the actual turned out to be better than the expectation mm. and it's 199,000 increase in the payroll and the best part more than the number the average hourly rate increased by 0.4 percent mm. which which shows is not that the lowest uh, salary people are getting the job yes it means people at the higher salary or who are being let go people at the new jobs are at a higher salary than the people that were let go Exactly. So that means the average hourly rate is higher and 199,000 people got the new jobs. That shows positive economic conditions. Positive economic conditions, exactly. Now GM, General Motors Cruise Division. Now Cruise is, uh, is exactly as the name suggests, it's a self-driving auto that you just put on a cruise and a car drives. So GM's Cruise Division is laying off 900 people and that's mainly the engineers and the product managers. Absolutely. So the new expectation right now is even though electric vehicle or the, these autonomous vehicles are the future, but it's not tomorrow. It will take some time, few years. So now GM Cruise Division is letting go 24%. Almost one-fourth of their staff is being let go. So now they're redesigning, uh, redeciding their priorities and redeciding that the timelines for their vehicle sales, for the new updates in their vehicle to see how things are going to turn out. Well, with that note, you know, we, we should definitely mention this thing that, you know, uh, GM is saying that they're going to be hiring more people in other divisions in the Absolutely. next year. But why GM is laying off 900 people in the cruise division is because, you know, um, the cruise has suspended its, its driverless and supervised car trips in the U.S. after a pedestrian collision in October. 
and that's why it has recalled 950 uh, robo taxis. Uh, absolutely, and it's, it's happening everywhere. There are a lot of things that needs to be yes. improved in these autonomous vehicles. We had similar situation with Tesla. We Tesla had similar also. situation with other cars. Yes. So a lot of softwares are being upgraded, and nobody wants to get into a situation. And being the first mover advantage is very difficult in this type of situation. There will be a lot of lawsuits lot of cases so everybody is waiting for somebody else to perfect the system and then get on the on my the question line. to you is with the self-driving cars right when a car is in a, a self-driven mode right what do you do as a driver well that's the problem <laughs> the problem is unless you give the driver something to do the driver mm -hmm. can fall asleep correct that's why a lot of these autonomous cars you have every 10 seconds you have to do something, you have to change something. Exactly, you have yeah, the other driver can be on the phone, yeah, listen, it's my free time, and I can be on the phone, the accident happens. watch a video, exactly, there you go. So this is why the softwares are being upgraded, all these companies, the big companies are waiting for somebody else to perfect the system, perfect the software, Correct. so they can implement it. You know, moving ahead with technologies is always a great thing, and then our technologies, you know, uh, has come very, very far ahead. You know, our lives have changed because of technology, but something like this, this is very risky, you know, in a self-driven car. All right, now talk about risky. Let's talk about global news here. Talk about risk. Well, we have uh, mentioned this in bits and pieces in our last few shows, but we got a little more information. It has to do with China. China is having tremendous problems when it comes to real estate. They are, you know, their inventory is overflowing with real estate, um, you know, properties and everything. And now the banks, you know, Chinese major bank or Chinese government are selling bonds. Well, if you take a step back, the way it worked out, a lot of this development, yeah. extra overdevelopment yes. in China was funded by the local banks. Correct. Now, when you make 100,000 apartments and they are not needed, how do you pay the bank back? So a lot of these smaller banks are on the verge of filing bankruptcy because they are, not get, yeah. they are not getting the money back correct, correct. for the money that was funded into the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to save these smaller banks, Chinese government, the Chinese central bank, they are coming out issuing new uh, bonds, funding some of these banks, restructuring the banks, merging the banks to make sure the Chinese economy <laughs> doesn't really have bank collapsing situation. Right. This this is a really, really, um, you know, uh, very uh, shocking news because there are thousands of banks and a number of hundreds of provinces and the amount is the highest on the record since 2020 when the Chinese cabinet began allowing local governments to issue special bonds to replenish capital. But they are actually issuing record number of special bonds to support troubled banks. Not necessarily means that, you know, that the trouble will go away with the real estate market. So China is really struggling. One is that the inflation rate, second is that real estate market, and the economy in, the, in, in the China is, is a warning sign. But, uh, you know, let's see what happens. And the TikTok. TikTok is having a great time. Of course, TikTok, the app made in China, right? And TikTok is investing $1.5 billion to, to get back into um, online shopping in Indonesia. Yep, it's called Tokopedia. <laughs> and TikTok is yes. buying the controlling shares, 75% <laughs> shares of Tokopedia mm. to buy this online selling platform. So this is going to be another eBay or Amazon type of situation Correct. over there. But, but think about the magnitude of the situation. $1.5 billion is being invested to buy an online platform by TikTok. Already, that's interesting. Now let's bring in a news from India. India overtakes Hong Kong to become the world's seventh largest stock market. That's amazing. I mean, Indian economy is in top four right now. But the stock exchange was number eight. Yes. Now they are becoming number seven. Uh, because the stock prices are increasing in India. There is a lot of confidence in the stock market in India. So when the stock prices increases, the total stock exchange value increases. So India will be number seven, again higher than Hong Kong when it comes to the stock market. That would be great. You know, it, it, it's, uh, uh, it, I would be very happy, it's one of my wishes 
to see India's stock market index in the Wall Street Journal newspaper. Absolutely. If you ever see that, of course, you know, on the top, US is there, China is mm -hmm. there, uh, Britain is there, uh, Canada is there, Japan is there, right? Yep, yep, yep. And yep. then I want to see India, Bombay Soon Stock enough. X and BSC. Soon enough. That would be, that would be great yep, news. Absolutely. You know? absolutely. All right, talk about great news. This is really amazing. When you have money, you can buy almost anything that you like. And boy, oh boy, this is interesting story for you. The biggest residential property uh, sale of the year in London is understood to have reached an agreement just right before Christmas. And this property is being purchased by Mr. Adar Punawala, who is a billionaire, Indian billionaire, and the CEO of Serum Institute, the company which came out with the drug uh, during the COVID time. And uh, the, he's buying this property. It's <coughs> And he's buying this property, which is in London. It's the Ever Conway House in Mayfair for 138 million pounds. That equals AJ 1,444 crore rupees. That's a lot of money, 138 million dollars. But again, if you have it, why not spend it? Use sure. it, whatever do, makes you happy. The, the the price tag makes Ever Conway House the second most expensive home ever sold ever sold in yep. London and that this happens to be the biggest deal of the year. There is another uh, property in uh, London which is owned by Saudi Arabia King, you know, King MBS and it's in the market for sale. If that gets sold, it will be the most expensive absolutely. property sold in London. It will be but higher let's talk than, about... Huh? It will be higher than one. Uh, absolutely. Million. You know, uh, but um, you know, this property will be acquired by Serum Life Sciences, a British subsidiary of Punawala's Family Serum Institute. And as you know, Serum Institute was founded by Cyrus Punawala. Other Punawala is his son. But they were, Adar Punawala and a family were renting this property before buying it, all right? Renting it 50,000 pounds a week. 50,000 pounds a, a week. week. Exactly, the rental price. And finally, they, they decided to uh, to buy this property. So all the best to Adar Punawala. Hey, listen, Rishi Sunak, Indian origin, is the PM. Absolutely. All right, Adar Punawala, an Indian guy, uh, buys the uh, you know expensive property of the year and second most expensive ever sold in London. Does it get any better than that? Yes, it does get very better than that. And AJ will talk about Indian women's cricket team. Absolutely. So <laughs> for the first time in the history of Indian women cricket, in a test match, 400 runs were scored in both innings <coughs> together in one test match. It has never happened before. In men's cricket in 1935, it had happened once before where the England team made 400 runs in both innings. But women team, Indian women team had never done it before. So it's, it's a good news. I'm glad to see that it's not just the Indian men cricket team, the Indian women cricket team is getting popularity and is coming in the news as That's well. That's a great news. All the power to these powerful Indian women. Keep up the great work. I wish that they had won the series against England. But anyway, this is, this is a record to be noted and we're proud of you. Now, uh, in the end, let's talk about US sports and right now, even though baseball season is far away, but baseball is in the news because AJ, uh, Japanese player Shohei Atani, right? right? He um, used to play for Los Angeles, um, you know, um, Angels. He has signed a record-breaking contract in the baseball, seven hundred million dollars for ten years. Wow! And All he's right? pretty young. He's a gifted player. He's very talented. He pitches and also bats. It's wow. not only one thing, but he does it both. $700 million for 10 years. Now this is what he's going to do. What he's going to do is that he's going to draw $2 million a salary every year and then the balance is going to be at the end of the year $690 and some wow. million. Dollars. And now is he going to be saving taxes or not? That mm -hmm. is the homework I'm giving you, uh, you know, to, to come up with the answer next week. But read Definitely. the story, get the details. The numbers are amazing. So that's a $700 million. That's and huge. since we are in Jersey and we are in New York, obviously we got to be New York Yankees fan. And New York Yankees, as they promised that they will be restructuring a team, they are getting this young player, Juan Soto. Juan All right, Soto. from San Diego Padres. And this is going to be amazing player, young, and he's going to bring so much power. So you got Juan Soto, you got Aaron Judge, you know, taking care of it. And then, uh, and then you got Garrett Cole on the mound. And Yankees have said that they're going to bring another high-value 
picture uh, before the season starts. So all in all, that's a great news. Absolutely. And now cricket update from Mr. AJ. So the India South of Africa yes. series is going on. T20 series was labeled one each. We have from Sunday itself. We'll have the one day series ODI starting. It begins so in we, South Africa. We yes. look forward to having it. It will start a little early in the morning for the US time around three o'clock. But please watch out. Yeah, you'll you have fun. All right. With that note, we come to an end of this week's business talk with AJ. Thank you so very much for your time, Absolutely. sir. Thank you. And uh, viewers, we look forward to have you join us again next week, same place, same time. Until then, I am Sanjeev Pandya, wishing you all happy holidays, smiley days ahead, and. Uh, do take care of yourself.